Uh, hello, my name is John Cangelosi. I am a science teacher here at Bangor High School. I teach astronomy, earth science, and some STEM classes in the STEM Academy. And I'm also director of the Astronomical Observatory here right at the high school. We have here, uh, we're standing in the, in the observatory. We have above us a 12-inch Newtonian reflecting telescope. Uh, and that telescope is um, in a, uh, attached to a mount that moves the telescope and that mount and telescope are, uh, communicate with some software we have here. Um, so we can basically point the telescope wherever we want and keep it there for as long as we want. Uh, astronomy is a, usually a junior or senior level class at the high school. Uh, students uh, are urged to take chemistry first, um, but if they're taking chemistry at the same time, that's also acceptable. Uh, so astronomy is a science elective, and it allows us to get uh, more of a hands-on look uh, at science by using an actual telescope. We use telescopes both in class and uh, we even have night observing sessions using the telescope here. Uh, if it's a clear night, like tonight supposed to be, uh, I will often um, post on our um, website that there might be an observing session tonight um, and students will email me back. And if I can get a few students, uh, three or four, we've even had up to like 10 or 11 students in here, um, I'll come back and open up the observatory. So tonight something we could look at would be the moon, uh, Jupiter is up, uh, Venus is up, and uh, if any students wanted to come back at two in the morning, Saturn will be up. But I don't think that would happen. Um, and so the, the night observing sessions give us a, uh, a real connection to the, the observational uh, skills we're building in class with the actual observations here at the telescope. In 2011, some students and I knew that there was a, uh, a supernova in a, in a galaxy. And so uh, about four students and I came back here at night and we uh, used the software to point right at the galaxy. Uh, we used our camera and uh, hooked it to the telescope and took about a four minute exposure and then when we looked at the pictures, we could see the galaxy and we could also see the one, and so just for background, that galaxy is billions of stars. We can, there's no way we can see an individual star, but um, one star is, was experiencing a supernova explosion. It was bright enough to see that single star. So we could see this individual star basically blowing up and the incredible thing was um, that that galaxy was 20 million light years away and we were able to capture the image of it. Something you need a very, very high quality telescope for. Um, UMaine has just recently built a uh, state-of-the-art observatory and so they have a high caliber telescope like this one but um, other than that um, you would have to travel pretty far to get a telescope of this of this caliber. Oh, well tonight it's, it's close to a full moon, so I think last night was the full moon, but uh, what we would look for is, um, as part of class, the students um, know about certain craters or certain areas on the moon. So if we came in for an observing session, we would try to find some of those specific craters or uh, large areas called Maria on the moon and see if the students could pick out which ones they were um, another thing we'll do is we'll look at the, the edges of the moon uh, and try to really see the relief. So you can see the moon actually has a lot of mountain ranges and uh, you can kind of see the difference between the low and the high lying areas on the edges of the moon. It's, it's incredibly impressive. When people look through it, um, they're often up on a, a lift looking through the telescope. I'm often down on the floor and everyone just you know, they either gasp or they say wow or they're just, they're thrilled by the, the level of detail. You can, 
it's almost too much detail when you look at it. It's almost overwhelming. Well, one thing that really stands out is, uh, is a photograph we took of the moon. And it was different than the photograph I described earlier uh, with the galaxy. With the moon or planets, anything that's really bright, we don't use a, uh, an astronomy camera. We actually use an astronomy video camera. And the video camera allows us to capture many images over the period of a couple of minutes. And then what we do is we have students use software to pick out the best images in that video sequence. They take those sharpest images, the ones that are most in focus, because images kind of go in and out of focus because of the atmosphere, and basically stack those images one on top of the other to end up with a very detailed picture. So one of the best um, images we have of the moon is one, one that students processed. It's of the North Pole of the moon, and um, it's just an incredible image. Well, just I think the biggest thing that I, I, I like to see is just an appreciation of the night sky. And it's a, it's a great hobby. It's the kind of thing where, especially with long winter nights, if you don't mind being a little cold, it's great to go outside, um, observe the moon, planets, different constellations, and watch the night sky as the night progresses and also as the seasons progress. So I think the thing that I, I like seeing the most is when students have that appreciation of the night sky and then just of the universe as a whole. Uh, the other night or the other day during class, two students were, were on a hike late later in the evening uh, on the weekend and they, uh, they had taken a picture from a mountain uh, at Acadia looking down uh, on a lake and there was the reflection of the moon and Venus in the lake and they were just so excited to show that picture to me and it was great for me to see. It was really fun. So students can sign up just through their regular course selection and um, if there is enough space they can, they're usually put right in assuming they've had uh, chemistry or are taking chemistry at the same time. Um, so we, know, we typically have uh, 40 to 60 students for astronomy. Um, there's been two to three classes uh, each year and so as long as a student signs up early they're, they're all set and preferences given to uh, seniors and uh, if there's enough space then juniors can, can be let into the class.